Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we are checking out this brilliant 3D printed Mazda Wankel engine. Now this was designed and created by Eric Harrell and I will include a link to it in the video description. And this is just a brilliant 3D print. So I want to kind of go through it. Uh, we're going to check out the different parts of it, talk about how it works, talk about the airflow and some of the pros and cons. It's just a fascinating build uh, and I really wanted to show it off on Eric's behalf. Again, I've got a link to this in the video description. Now this particular model is a one one third scale 13B REW engine. It was used in the Mazda RX-7 between 1992 and 2002, and it was actually a twin turbocharged engine. It had twin sequential turbos, so there's a turbo that attaches right on there, and another one as well. And this engine actually produced about 255 to 280 horsepower, uh, quite impressive coming out of this 1.3 liter, especially when you consider the size. This thing's only about one cubic foot in volume. So let's start with a walkthrough of the engine and talk about the different components on it. So this is the front of the engine here. Here we have the front plate. Behind that is the first rotor housing. It's called the rotor housing because it houses the rotor. So there inside you can see the rotor. This is kind of the equivalent of the piston in a piston cylinder engine. So this rotor will be spinning around within that rotor housing producing power and then we get to our center plate here. Then we have our second rotor housing. So this is a two rotor engine. And then we get to our rear plate in the back. And then finally the flywheel. And this is actually power. There's an electric motor to make this thing rotate. So you can see we can rotate the rotors inside and we can rotate this flywheel here. So once again, looking inside of the engine, this rotor is ultimately what's powering that flywheel and then sending power from the flywheel to the transmission. So this rotor rotates on an eccentric shaft, which is in the center here. And this eccentric shaft comes all the way from the front plate to that back plate to that flywheel and it's rotating that flywheel. It's not actually cut off like you see here. It actually extends all the way through the engine. Uh, here it's just cut off so that you can see inside of this engine. Uh, but that rotor is going to rotate on that eccentric shaft and ultimately power is produced by forcing that rotor to rotate. So here's what's really cool about this 3D printed model because the rotor actually has a light on it showing us the combustion process. So just like a piston cylinder device has those four strokes intake, compression, power and exhaust. This does those same four things, just the difference is it's not a reciprocating mass, instead it's rotational. And so looking in the engine here, you can see that as it rotates over, it pulls in that air, compresses it. You've got your spark plugs right here, so that ignites it. You have your exhaust, it pushes the exhaust out here, pulls in that fresh new air, fills up this chamber with air and fuel. As that air and fuel gets squeezed down, your spark plugs fire, pushes this rotor to force to rotate and then that exhaust is pressed out the exhaust right here. This is where the exhaust port is. Intake ports are coming in from right here, feeding into the chamber. Now it's not just one chamber that is active at a time. In fact, there are three chambers, as you can see, and all of them are simultaneously going through that combustion cycle. And so up on the top here, you can see the intake stroke, which is always occurring within this region. Then over here, you always have the power stroke and it's occurring in this region over here. You've got the exhaust coming out right here. So you've got intake, you compress that air and fuel, get over here, you hit your spark plugs, power stroke pushes this thing over and then the exhaust stroke forces out those exhaust gases. And that's occurring in three different locations at the same time, you've got that cycle occurring, and because there are two rotors, so that means you've got six cycles continuously occurring within this engine. All right, so now let's walk through the airflow for this engine, starting with the intake and then ending with the exhaust. So the air starts off coming in the intake portion of the turbocharger. You're gonna feed that air through a filter, then to the compressor side of the turbocharger. It will be passed out of the turbocharger, sent to the front of the vehicle to go through the intercooler, and then come back to the intake manifold. So here we have the intake manifold. It'll be mounted like so with your air coming across and then down through these runners and into the individual rotor housings. You can see there are two ports on each side. Each rotor housing has two ports of air coming in. So it's bringing air on the left and right side of the rotor. So if I rotate this out, you can actually see those ports there. So there's one port on the left side of this rotor that feeds in air on that side. And then you have another port on this side which feeds in air on this side of it. And so you can see there's two here in the middle, so it actually splits there and one feeds air to one rotor, one feeds air to the other rotor. You can see that lined up there 
on the intake manifold. So looking inside the rotor here, you can see if I shine a light, you can see that intake port where the air comes in as that rotor rotates. You've got the same thing on this side of the rotor housing. So in our center plate where the air will come in right here and then it will pass into, it'll be pulled in as this rotor rotates, creating a vacuum, pulling in that air through that air intake port on both sides. So you've got your air which comes in on this side of the rotor as well as on this side of the rotor. It goes through that combustion process and then it's forced out this port right here, which is the exhaust port. So the air will come out of those two exhaust ports, go into the exhaust manifold, where it then spools up the turbocharger, which is attached there. So you can see the two ports there for the exhaust to match up with, and then it spools up this turbocharger. And this turbocharger actually does spin. If I blow into the exhaust, you can see it rotates there and you can see the intake side spins as well. After the exhaust passes through the turbocharger, it will exit right here and go towards the back of the vehicle where it will exit through the tailpipe. So let's get into the advantages and disadvantages of this engine style. And starting with one of the most obvious ones is that this has a great power to weight ratio and a great power to volume ratio. So this is a one third scale. Imagine this thing just being about three times as wide and three times as tall. It's about one cubic foot and yet it's capable of producing 255 to 280 horsepower out of a one point three liter. Now part of why it makes so much power relative to its displacement is the fact that it has a lot of power strokes for every revolution of this rotor. And so the eccentric shaft is geared to the rotor with a three to one ratio. So when this rotor rotates just once, the eccentric shaft will rotate three times. So let's demonstrate that here with the eccentric shaft. So watch this, it's going to rotate one full time around and we'll follow this spot on the rotor. So one full time around and now we're here, another full time around, now we're here another full time around and we're back to where we started. So the eccentric shaft rotates three times for every single rotation of this rotor and this rotor has three combustion processes happening simultaneously. So let's do a little bit of quick math to explain why this engine cycle is advantageous for creating power versus a four stroke engine. So if you have a four stroke single cylinder piston cylinder engine rotating at a thousand RPM, a thousand times per minute, that four stroke engine has one power stroke for every two revolutions of the crankshaft. So if the engine's spinning at a thousand RPM, you have 500 power strokes per minute. Now in a rotary engine, if you're spinning at that same speed, the engine is spinning at a thousand RPM, that rotor is spinning at a third of that, so 333 RPM. But you have three combustion phases for every one rotation of that rotor. So if the rotor is spinning at 333 RPM, you multiply that by three, you get a thousand power strokes per minute if the engine is spinning at a thousand RPM. So it's a lot like a two-stroke engine where a two-stroke engine rotating at 1,000 RPM is also producing 1,000 power strokes per minute versus a four-stroke engine which is producing 500 power strokes per minute. So often people will kind of compare the displacement of a 1.3 liter rotary engine to a 2.6 liter piston cylinder engine doubling the displacement because it has twice as many power strokes per engine revolution. Another advantage of the Wankel engine is just its very simple design. And so there's really only three main moving parts. You've got the eccentric shaft and then you've got the two rotors which force that eccentric shaft to rotate. Also everything is moving in a circle. So you have rotational inertia rather than reciprocating mass like you have in a piston cylinder engine. So a piston cylinder, that piston's moving up and down. Within this rotary engine, everything's just spinning in a circle. And because of that, it helps allow for higher engine speeds. So the manual transmission rotary engines uh, and these RX-7s, RX-8s, they're spinning up to 9,000 RPM, which is a crazy high engine speed. Very cool and very doable with a rotary engine design because everything is rotational. You don't have that reciprocating mass going up and down. Now, unfortunately, this engine also has quite a bit of disadvantages. So first off, it has a low thermal efficiency. Unfortunately, due to the design of the combustion chamber, the shape of it has a very large surface area without all that much volume. So overall, you've got a low compression ratio and you've got a lot of surface area to reject heat to. So instead of that heat rotating the rotor, you're simply losing it as wasted heat. Also due to the long shape of the combustion chamber, you often have unburnt fuel leaving the exhaust, which obviously is not that efficient. Now there are actually two spark plugs used and the reason why they do that is to help speed up combustion, make sure you do burn that fuel. So once the rotor finishes that compression cycle, you've got two spark plugs firing, which helps to spread that flame more quickly through the long combustion chamber. 
It also burns oil by design. So there are oil squirters within the combustion chamber. So during that intake stroke, you're also spraying in some oil. And that oil is to help seal the combustion chamber. You've got apex seals on the corners of that rotor. So there's three individual apex seals and you've got oil to help create a seal between the three different chambers. But by injecting oil, obviously that means you're burning oil and it also means the emissions aren't gonna be great because that oil has to leave through the exhaust. Now, speaking of sealing, sealing off these combustion chambers is another big problem with these engines. And part of the reason for that is that there are different areas with different temperatures within this rotor housing. So the top of the rotor is where you always have that intake stroke occurring versus you have that power stroke occurring on that bottom right and your exhaust continuing along the bottom there. And because of that, you have a cool section on top with a hot section on the bottom. Metals don't like to be at all these different temperatures when you're trying to seal something. And so from a sealing perspective, it's quite a challenge with this engine. Now to help mitigate this, you do have coolant jackets wrapped around the engine. So that's attempting to create an even temperature around the entire engine. That's what you see here in green on the engine, those different coolant jackets. But overall, it's a challenge to create a good seal with these style engines. So overall, it is a very cool engine, super compact, lots of power, very smooth power delivery. Unfortunately, quite a few disadvantages to it, which kind of killed it off, especially from an efficiency and an emissions perspective. Now I'm going to be creating a few more additional videos on rotary engines, talking about using hydrogen with it, talk about Mazda perhaps applying some Skyactiv-X X technology to the rotary engine and bringing it back. Um, so some cool stuff that I'll be creating in the future using this model. Very neat uh, thing here, which I again included a link to in the video description. Big thanks to Eric Harrell for sending me this to use in this video. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, of course, feel free to leave them below.